JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week July the 26th until July the 30th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, this week the main event is likely to be the FOMC monetary policy decision, but we also get some important uh, data releases like the Australian CPIs for the second quarter, Canada's CPIs for June, and Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for July. But let's take things from the beginning. Today is a relatively light day, with the only release worth mentioning being the Germany's, being Germany's IFO survey for July. The current assessment index is expected to have risen to 101.6 from 99.6, but the expectations one is anticipated to have slid to 103.3 from 104. That said, this is likely to, to this is likely to take the business climate index fractionally higher to 102.1 from 101.8. An event that may attract even more attention than the IFO survey may be a speech by Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee member Georgian Vlieg. A couple of weeks ago, MPC member Michael Sanders said that uh, economic activity has recovered a bit faster than forecast in May, in May and that it may become appropriate fairly soon to, wait, to withdraw some stimulus. However, um, Monetary Policy Committee member Jonathan Haskell said uh, last Monday that reducing stimulus is not the right option for the foreseeable future. So this suggests that the views within the Bank of England are varying and thus it would be interesting to hear where Vliet's uh, stands. If he also believes that some stimulus uh, should be withdrawn soon, the pound is likely to strengthen, while the opposite may be true if his view is closer to Haskell's. Now, Tuesday's agenda is also light. Uh, we only get uh, the U.S. durable goods orders for June and the Conference Board Consumer Confidence Index for July. Uh, headline orders are forecast to slow to 2.1% month over month from 2.3%, but the core rate is anticipated to have increased to 0.8% month over month from 0.3%. The CB index is anticipated to have declined somewhat to 124.1 from 127.3%. Now on Wednesday, the spotlight is likely to fall on uh, the FOMC interest rate decision. At its uh, latest meeting, the committee kept its uh, policy unchanged, but signaled that interest rates are likely to start rising in 2023. Since uh, then, we've heard the individual views of several policymakers, with, with some of them supporting that interest rates should even start rising during 2022 and others arguing against withdrawing monetary policy support too soon. The divided Fed was also reflect, reflected in the minutes of uh, that gathering with uh, various participants feeling that uh, conditions for reducing their asset purchases would be met somewhat earlier than uh, they had anticipated, while others saw a less clear signal from incoming data and suggested a patient approach uh, to, any, to any policy change. Overall, though, they generally agreed that it is important to be well positioned to reduce the, to reduce the pace of, of asset purchases in case there is faster than anticipated progress towards uh, uh, the committee's goals. What's more, both the headline and core CPIs for June accelerated by, by more than anticipated, with, headline, uh, with the headline rate rising to a 13-year high and the core one hitting its highest level since November 1991. This may have added to concerns that, if, that the inflation spike may eventually not be due to transitory factors. 
even Fetcher Powell, who said that uh, the economy is still ways off from uh, desired levels, failed to convince market participants that it will take long before they start normalizing their monetary policy. They, according to the Fed Fund futures, investors are now fully pricing in uh, the first uh, rate increase to happen in April 2023, and thereby they may be interested to see whether their bets are correct. They may also be eager to find out uh, when officials are planning to start scaling back their quantitative easing purchases. A hoggish uh, message suggesting that the rate hike may be on the cards for the first months of 2023 and hints pointing to a, to a quantitative easing tapering in the next few months may allow the US dollar to trade higher and equities to correct lower. However, with Wall Street hitting fresh records on Friday, it seems that equity investors are not concerned that much about higher interest rates, or they may be rushing into benefiting from cheap borrowing costs before a hike takes place. Anyhow, this week, stock traders may focus more on earnings by big giant, by big giant firms like, um, like Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, and uh, Tesla, where uh, stel stellar uh, results may encourage uh, buying uh, any possible deep trigger to, uh, by a hoggish Fed. As uh, for Wednesday's economic data releases during the Asian session, we have uh, Australia's uh, CPIs for the second quarter. The headline rate is forecast uh, to jump to 3.8% year over year from 1.1% above the upper end of the RBA's 2-3% to target range. However, the trend mean rate, although also expected to rise, is forecast to have stayed below the lower bound of that range. Specifically, the trend mean rate is anticipated to have risen to 1.7% year over year from 1.3%. Therefore, with underlying inflation metrics staying below the RBA's uh, objective, we doubt that all the traders will start betting on earlier tightening by this bank. At this month's gathering, officials uh, announced that they will proceed with more bond purchases beyond September and also said that they are planning to keep interest rates at current levels until 2024. So with that in mind, even if market sentiment continues to improve, we believe that uh, the OZ is likely to perform purer than, uh, other risk -link uh, than its other risk link counterparts, especially the Kiwi, the central bank of which is expected to push the hike button very soon, perhaps as early as uh, next month. Later in the day, we get more CPI data, this time from uh, Canada and for the month of June. Here, both the headline and core rates are forecast to have declined to 3.2 and 2.4 percent year over year from 3.6 and 2.8 percent respect respectively. At its latest meeting, the Bank of Canada appeared less hoggish than expected, saying that they continue to see the output gap closing in the second half of, of 2022, which suggests that their, ex their expectations over when they may start raising interest rates have not come forth. With that in mind, slowing inflation is likely to add credence to the view that uh, the prior surge was due to transitory factors and may prompt uh, cut traders to reduce their hike bets even further. This is likely to keep the loony under selling interest, especially against the greenback in case uh, the Fed sounds hoggish on Wednesday. Now on Thursday, during uh, the Asian morning, we have New Zealand's uh, ANZ Business Confidence Index for July, but no forecast is currently available. Later in the day, we get Germany's preliminary inflation data for, uh, for the same month, with both the CPI and the HICP year-over-year -year rates expected to have surged to 3.2% year-over-year and 3% year-over-year from 2.3% and 2.1% respectively. This is likely to raise uh, bets that Eurozone's headline inflation uh, print due out on Friday may also accelerate notably. The first estimate of the US GDP for the second quarter is also coming out and the forecast points to a rising growth rate to 8.6% uh, quarter over quarter, uh, quarter over quarter seasonally adjusted annual rate from 6.4%. Conditional upon uh, hoggish hints by the Fed on Wednesday, this is likely to encourage participants to bring even forth, even uh, further forth their bets uh, over uh, when they expect the committee to push the hike button. Finally, on Friday, the main items uh, on the agenda may be Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for July and the first estimate of the bloc's GDP for the second quarter. 
Eurozone's headline CPI's forecast to have ticked up to 2% from 1.9%, while the HICP excluding energy and food rate is anticipated to have uh, slid to 0.7% year over year from 0.9%. This comes in contrast with Germany's forecasts, which uh, point to a strong acceleration. If indeed the bloc's numbers are uh, as soft as expected, they will confirm the ECB's uh, dovish stance uh, last week and may keep the euro underselling interest. Remember that uh, the bank changed its uh, forward guidance, saying that it will keep interest rates at present or lower levels until it sees inflation reaching 2% well ahead of the end of the projection horizon, which may also imply a period during which inflation more moderately overshoots uh, that objective. In our view, this translates into willingness to hold rates low for much longer than the previous guidance suggested. As uh, for the GDP, no forecast um, is currently available. Uh, now, as for the rest of uh, Friday's uh, data, during the Asian session, Japan's employment report, preliminary industrial production and retail sales all for, all for June are coming out. The unemployment rate is forecast to have held steady at 3%, while the jobs to applications ratio is anticipated to have ticked up to 1.10 from 1.09. Industrial production is forecast to have rebounded 5% month over month after sliding 6.5%. But retail sales are expected to have slowed to 0.2% year over year from 8.3%. Later in the day, from the US, we get per personal income and spending for June alongside the core PCE index for the month. Personal income is expected to have declined again, but at a slower pace than the previous month, while spending is forecast to have slowed somewhat. The final University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for July is also due to be released, and it is expected to confirm its preliminary estimate of 80.8. From Canada, we have the monthly GDP for May, with expectations pointing to a 0.3% month-over-month contraction, the same as in April. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday, at around uh, 8 uh, a.m. 8 uh, a.m. GMT. So goodbye and uh, have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.